everybody. I just wanted to kind of give a quick update on the foundry. Um, I still haven't gotten any video out there yet on this, uh, so I'm trying to get something out there uh, that I don't have to edit, I guess. Try to make sure I'm in frame here. But we've got the uh, lid here with got a can in that it's like a juice can <clears throat> I've got it hot glued into the hole the uh, lip of the can fits pretty snug inside right here okay we got some hot glue around that so whenever we get around to uh, getting the refractory cement uh, for this get that cast but I've got other things I've got to do and a lot of time this weekend being home has been cut pretty short so anyway uh, I can't really go out and, and get all the stuff and besides the store didn't have the perlite I guess everyone's buying up perlite right now so we can't get the stuff right now and so I'm kind of thinking maybe just buy it off the internet or something have it shipped in for next time I'm home oh, I don't know if you guys can see inside here so there's the uh, the A25 crucible Still learning the camera so be patient with me here's the a25 crucible I think it was it holds I want to say 4.8 liters that's plum full like up, up to the, that's the brim full it'll hold 4.8 liters so hopefully this will hold enough uh, aluminum to cast my uh, my wheels for building a bandsaw or a, I mean a sawmill sorry about that uh, here, here was my little bit of leftover I had of the refractory I put it in a five gallon bucket and it turned out really smooth here you can see where I've ground it with my angle grinder and then I just rubbed it on the top of the cement over here to get it nice and flat to give me a removable surface down in the bottom here and it can kind of lift the, the uh, crucible up a little bit I don't know if you guys can see in there plus it can kind of double as a lid to set down here if I decide not to have it down in there I may not keep it in there plate here I think that's about 3 16 thick that's, that's uh, kind of overkill but I wanted something that was really strong and sturdy and this was the propane tank off my semi truck and so I decided to use it you know knowing it was good and heavy duty I can weld to it and not have to worry about any flexing or anything that will damage the refractory cement I mean this stuff it's, it's kind of brittle uh, I have been uh, heating it with a small torch running in there just a small propane torch and uh, I had it up to about 480 degrees is what the uh, the infrared thermometer said and I left that in there running until the propane tank ran out and I went through two of those small Coleman propane tanks heating this um, I think that's pretty good for now uh, until I get the lid cast once I get the lid cast and we'll probably go through another uh, two one or two of them uh, probably at a, a low temperature because it's gonna hold quite a bit of uh, heat in you know better that way and uh, We'll get that dried and we'll figure out how we're going to do the uh, the hinge system on this. Uh, what I'm thinking 
is some kind of like foot pedal here that I can you know uh, step down on it and be able to uh, it'll kind of lift the lid up and I'll have a handle to be able to swing it around to the side and we'll, we'll see how that goes but just wanted to give y'all an update and I guess now we're gonna go inside and do a little bit of uh, woodworking so we'll see you inside okay we are back inside and out of that crazy wind out there I think we've got some uh, storm system blowing in and probably gonna have some tornado watches and stuff here pretty soon but it's that time of year um, here, here's what I want to work on today and uh, what it is is a Swedish butter knife and cutting board and I'm hoping maybe I can use this for some cheese cutting or or something and but this is a, uh, a project that I've been working on kind of a, a gift set and I'm gonna be making these to sell at uh, trade shows and stuff when my wife uh, gets set up for uh, going to those but yeah and uh, I guess what's special about this one is it is the end grain right uh, this here is the heart of the tree right here and so like you know really brittle right and so uh, basically I had a crack here that and one here that you know this one here practically you know would the handle would just break right off and so what I did was I used uh, CA glue uh, from Bob Smith Industries and uh, whenever I get set up for uh, you know like the Amazon store or whatever on on uh, there when I get that set up I will put a link in there for you guys to be able to, to get uh, the, the exact same glue uh, what I used was the uh, extra fine or, or extra thin I guess I should say or super thin I think it's called and uh, that stuff it's almost too thin but the thing about it is is it soaks in to the wood really good to stabilize the wood make it much stronger and like this edge right here if uh, that's pretty darn sharp okay and if I didn't have the CA glue soaked into this it wouldn't stay sharp it, it would not hold an edge it would just only be able to be a butter knife and so now, now here's one I made last night and the wood grain you know is going uh, this way and the and this this hasn't been finished it doesn't have any CA glue or anything on it and uh, you know, it's just uh, kind of my own little design. I, I did copy off of a, uh, a photo that I found on the internet. And I kind of, you know, just put my own little touch to it with the, the finger grooves here. And and uh, I, I did change it a little bit with, you know, the height here. And it that one was almost just, it, it ended up that way because of how brittle the, the edge was. So, I mean, if you see here, you know you can see how it's just a bit smaller okay so that one was just a you know the first time one trial was now this one is going to have a brother okay so that's what we're going to work on right now okay this was um this was a uh part of the piece of wood that was going to be um, the first wooden bowl for pure living for life but it exploded on the lathe so that that's this is a, a piece of wood from that um, let me see if I got I think I still got those pieces laying around here that bowl yeah. here's the here's part of that bowl uh, you know, I don't know if we could match this up or not, but you can kind of see that that's basically what uh, this is being made from. So even though this thing exploded on the lathe, I'm still going to make something useful out of it. That, that's kind of, that's, that's my thing, okay? 
everything I make seems to be, you know, repurposed and, uh, you know, instead of just throwing it away or, or burning it as firewood, I mean, I don't have anything against that, of course, but um, I, li I like to make things out of, you know, old pallet wood and stuff like that. But, well, let's see here. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get started on this, get it kind of straightened up a little bit. It's got a little bit of a curve to it because my... Uh, I got a porter cable bandsaw. It's just a little bitty one from Lowe's and it doesn't cut real super straight. You know, I, I just put my this uh, Swanson level on there. I clamped it down you know as a fence to go along there and that's probably not the best fence to use but that's, that's what I did so um, let me see here. Yeah you guys are this is my ultra wide um, 10 to 18 millimeter on the Canon 80D. And I got it zoomed all the way in, so hopefully you guys can kind of to see what I'm doing here uh, in a little more detail. Here we go. mishap um, I kind of expected it to happen eventually I guess better for it to happen early on than than later when it was thinner and, and probably break the the blade or something even worse beyond repair but the other one luckily I did it didn't slip out of my hand like that and uh, break but it did have the same uh, check in it and so I caught that early on and I put some CA glue in it. This one here didn't quite look so bad, so I kind of neglected that. Well, let me, uh, I had a few other things here I wanted to show you. Uh, some, some things my wife makes. Let me get my fingers out of the way here. Okay. Um, so, if you, uh, if you like, you know, some plaques like this or whatever, she does make these herself, handmade. They're not laser printed or nothing. She does it by hand with a, uh, like a soldering iron, wood burner. Uh, we do those, we do coasters, um, just almost anything that you could think of, she can probably do it. And, you know, we like to put it on red cedar but we can probably do it on just about any kind of wood. It needs to be a light colored wood so it can show up. And 
if you guys would like to order something, you can go to our Facebook. It's, uh, what is that? Hoods Custom Woodworking on Facebook. So go give us a, a look over there. And hopefully in the future, maybe we'll get a, you know, if we can start getting some orders or something, we might look into uh, doing a, a website or something. Let me find my gloves here. Oh, these are not sponsored. I get these at Walmart. Um, they, these are my favorite uh, rubber gloves, latex, whatever they are. I guess, oh, they're nitrile. They're, they're not latex. Now, if you don't like your glue to set up in like three seconds, <laughs> then you might want to get the medium CA glue. The, the medium takes a little bit longer to set up. I don't think it. I don't think that it uh, affects the uh, actual bond strength. But the this one here is the super thin. And it says one to three second glue. It is fast, trust me, it is fast. Uh, what I had before this was the medium, which has, you know, a little bit of work in time. So let's uh, open this up a little bit here. I gotta get ready to, to fit that up and, and I better get it right the first time, right? Wet that down pretty good. That burns your eyes pretty good there. My gloves are already getting stuck to it. But we'll just sand the gloves off of the piece, I guess. I guess better to sand the gloves off than to have to sand my fingers off of it. <laughs> right? Yeah, my, my hands are... These gloves seem to be pretty well stuck to it now where it, it kind of run down the side right there. It's, it's doing its thing, that's for sure. Can you uh, grab that can of 2P10 up there? The aerosol can. Uh-oh. My wife is a, a little bit of a shorty, and I got the 2P10 way up on the top, and I don't know if she can get it. My hands are like, I am I am glued. <laughs> I want to have her spray a little bit of that on here. The activator is what that 2P10 is. Let me uh, hold that out. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We got to close that bottle up. Don't, don't, no, no, no. You don't have gloves on. Wow, I am. Yeah, if we you spray that activator inside this bottle, and we're gonna have issues. That stuff's not exactly cheap. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hey, and we're trying to not have to edit this. Okay, so you guys are getting what? What are they called? Reality. This is reality here, guys. Okay, here we go. Just spray it. Spray it on there. Pretty liberally. Let it soak in. A little more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it's done. There we go. Yeah, look at that. You know, that's why we wear these rubber gloves. Yeah, I don't even have to hold on to it. It's got me. Okay. So we're gonna let this dry a little bit and you know, wave it around. Hey, that that is the good thing about nitrile gloves. I mean, look at this. If I was using those blue latex gloves, they'd have done ripped off here and this thing, you know, it stuck to me pretty good. <laughs> Is that funny or what? <laughs> okay. Ah. I, I took my fingerprints off there. Okay. You like that? Hope you guys like my channel. Um, subscribe to my channel. 
we've got lots and lots of things to to do every time i come home i'm normally gone for oh two or two to three weeks at a time come home for about four days and this is this is what i do to kind of forget everything you know out there and and what i do uh in my day in my day-to-day -day, which is uh truck driving i'm an owner operator in the oil field right now and so that's right now that's what actually funds all my projects is is doing that and maybe someday i can get away from doing that and then just uh, focus on my projects and so we also of course you and before this clip i guess i, I think i'm going to put that uh before this here is about the the foundry we're, we're doing the foundry we're going to um use the foundry hopefully to cast the wheels it for the sawmill and then build a timber frame workshop in the backyard and the uh, level spot i've been working on back there so there will be a whole lot of uh stuff to come and uh, i think we want to uh that's another thing to talk about i think we want to change the name of this channel and you guys let me know in the comments um i'm thinking uh i don't know probably something like metal stone and wood with david hood i don't know that's, that's kind of what i'm thinking but um something to that effect i think because i i do metal working woodworking and some uh, stone working so probably not a whole lot of stone stuff but you know of course the casting of the refractory stuff like that but and uh, we may in the future grind out some stone sinks out of granite I'm not real sure I, I'm gonna have to source that so anyway um, hopefully this is set up good enough I hope if not, you might witness me getting injured by this thing. So here we go.
hopefully we don't make too big of a mess. You kind of see that stuff just really soak right into the wood. I'm not squeezing the bottle or nothing. I'm just letting it, you know, come out freely. That is, it's really coming out now. We really need to let it soak in good. I know it seems kind of wasteful the way it's wanting to pour around. I don't know why it's doing that this time. Close it off with just a little bit. Rub that around and that stuff that's on the table here so we can soak some in there and then we're going to set it over here off of that try not to be stuck to it we don't need it so much on the handle per se it's more more in the the blade part of it and I don't I don't guess I really need the uh, paper towel so much other than to maybe set it on so that way it's not glued to the board and we can tear it off there and we'll we'll sand that paper towel off hopefully <laughs> as much as I'm putting on there now it, it, uh, it might try to become solid all right so now we can work on this one here remember we got to kind of be quick I just turn that thing off just a little more here yeah it's like this stuff is so thin it's almost a all or nothing kind of deal Ooh, that is strong on the eyes I tell you what even that ceiling fan is not helping out a whole lot Yeah, Bob Smith Industries is probably liking me a little bit right now. They're like, yeah, pour it on there, buddy. Pour it on. Buy some more from me. This stuff is not cheap, but it's good. I mean, it. I like it. So I can't wait to get into doing some uh, acrylic work once I get the uh, sawmill going. And... Uh, Get to doing some slab tables and well a front door for my house i really want to do a uh, inverted live edge uh, door with uh, you know where the live edge both live edges are are facing towards the uh, middle of the door and be able to like color it like a blue or something like that and some I'm thinking some uh, pearl in it and do a wrought iron uh, like a, a wrought iron frame I, I think around it I may not do that I might I might not I need to really think about it kind of draw it out and, and see what my wife thinks because I can explain it to her and she's not probably gonna picture what I'm picturing but she'll probably just say yeah okay <laughs> she's seen enough things that I've made and really liked it that you know it's just kind of like yeah okay and then once I make it like then she'll you know see uh, if she likes it then but once you put like some wrought iron around the trim of a door you're kind of committed that you know I mean you, you can't go back so let's see if we can Pry this off here a little bit. Yeah, getting my gloves kind of stuck to it. Isn't that beautiful? Nice blue paper towel on there.
so that if you get like the thick, I, I haven't used it yet, but I think if you get the thick CA glue, it's not going to soak in as deep into the wood. So if this is what you're trying to do with it, I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, I would go with the thin, it, it dries fast, and it soaks in pretty deep into the wood so you can sand it and you still have that protective layer inside the wood plus it it strengthens the wood and you know because I mean shoot that thing it's almost it's I mean it's stiff as a, a steel blade right now so yeah so anyway we will sand this down with the uh, I think I'll just use my Dewalt uh, DA sander here I uh, believe I have 220 grit on there. I think that's 220. And well, I'll probably hit it first with this here. Let me see. That's uh, that's 120. Okay, we're back. And well, I noticed that I've got I ha somehow I got the uh, C CA glue on here somehow. I think it was when I sprayed that 2P10. Uh, activator on it so I had to sand this down and I know how everybody loves to watch oil be put on wood and so we're gonna show you a little bit of putting some uh, butcher's block oil on the cedar after I sanded it. it it has a previous coat on there but we had to sand on it because I goofed up a little bit so here we go Look at that. I love it. That never gets old. Never does. Ever. Every time you put oil on wood, butcher block oil, Danish oil. Yes, it's one of those kind of high maintenance finishes, but I really like it for you know something like a cutting board that's going to get scarred up and you know that you're going to have to fix that you know and basically have to reapply it over the years over and over again and uh, I don't think it, it it's not like a varnish uh, that you know builds up over time and in, in, in unused spots of on it. So I'd recommend staying with a uh, like the butcher block oil for you know like a cutting board or something. If you use like a varnish or um, like a polyurethane, well then a polyurethane is going to get chipped and scratched, and then in order to fix that, you're going to have to sand it completely off. So you you don't necessarily want to use that kind of finish. And so that's why I go like especially for something like uh, kitchen utensils and stuff um, You know, of course these have CA glue on them and that's primarily To strengthen them because I mean they're they're quite thin right here. So it's just You know, it's, it's one of those things um, That you know will help make them last a little bit longer, but there you go. Look at that the red cedar is western red cedar that we we get from a local sawmill okay let's see here um well this bench is a little tall let's see mm -hmm. I didn't get too much dust around here so Jumping from that project to this project for a moment, because just to show you how sharp this wood knife is, this is a summer sausage pack from Wally World, and look at this. Okay, that is quite sharp. It did put a little bit of an indention in my blade. Sorry about that, I scooted that. It's not much, it's a little nick. 
Okay, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys that it is quite sharp. Okay, I just cut that plastic package. And uh, garnet, that's the one I planned on giving away. So we got some cheese here. Some good old sharp cheddar and some uh, Colby and Monterey Jack. Some Colby Jack. Look at that. Who'd have thunk that you can make a wood knife, a wooden knife, and uh, be able to cut open your package of cheese, right? So, all right, we've got our cheese out here. Let me kind of clear this off here. I think they got some dust on it here. And uh, so, I guess. Can you see what I got going on here? We kind of need the camera angled up a little bit. But I think you guys can can see that. Make sure we got the focus right there. This doesn't seem to be sticking quite like it does to our metal knives. I think it's like the rounded edge here and the bevel kind of helps it come out away from it and not stick to it so much. That works out quite nicely. Hmm. Mmm. One piece. That is good. I'm sorry, I opened the summer sausage. My wife just uh, let me know that I opened the summer sausage and I didn't cut any. <laughs> so, let's see if this will cut the summer sausage. I think this uh, stuff here is, is probably quite tough. So let's see what it does. Oh my gosh, imagine that, a wooden knife cuts summer sausage and it cuts it like a dream too look at that will it get dull well, I'm, I'm almost starting to wonder if I really want to give this away <laughs> that is really doing like way better than I thought it would I'm, I mean, granted, it's it's not, uh, you know, it's not like a uh, razor sharp, but I'm not pushing down real hard. I mean, that's about, I don't know, four or five pounds of pressure that I'm putting on that. And, uh, of course, um, you know, I'm not giving away this cutting board. I will have to make another one. Because I've, I've scarred this one up, but I am giving away this knife. And so, you guys will have a knife that was used in the making of one of my videos. You even witnessed this thing breaking in half, right? Okay, and we glued it back together with CA glue. We coated it with CA glue after uh, getting the rough... Uh, finish grind and you know grind on it the rough shape that we wanted then we came back and sanded it with the DA sander and then we put uh, butcher's block oil on it and this thing is working really good I am I am just amazed I am amazed that is so cool it's starting to seem a little bit harder to cut through there may have just been that piece wow, that is cool I can't believe it's even done this good I may need to touch that up a little bit yeah it, it, it's I can feel a slight burr that it's starting to produce so yeah 
I will have to sharpen that back up just a touch. And uh, but that this is not its intended use. Okay, but I just wanted to show what it could do or prove to myself what it could do. I guess so. There you have it. Thanks for watching.